team. And I got accepted. And my mentor was Sally Hinchcliffe, published author, wonderful little bird watching lady who lives in some remote part of Scotland where there's no human, few human beings. She would travel all the way from this little remote part of Scotland in the beginning to come and meet me in Liverpool and then later on at the um, British Museum in London she'd come all this way not getting paid to do any of this just getting reimbursed for travel expenses you know she's trying to write her next book and she's sacrificing all this time and she sat down with me and said tell me what you're doing you know so I showed her the book that me and my sister had was, was done together with and I showed her all the stuff I've been writing myself about my life story and said I was calling these agents and publishers and telling them this was the best thing and they needed to publish it and she's like look you're burning bridges you don't know what you're doing you've got to approach these people professionally you've only got one shot with an agent you've got one shot with a publisher and that's it and if you keep doing that none of them are ever going to want to publish anything by you so she told me to stop doing that and we set the goal of a year later for her to have my prose raised to a standard that publishers and agents would want to represent me. That was our main goal. Anyway, six months after her work in her magic, I had literary agents um, competing to represent me. So I was able to make a choice. And I met this gentleman out of London. Um, who coincidentally just won Literary Agent of the Year about three weeks ago in England. His name is Robert Kirby. He's with United Agents. And I went and chatted with him. And the chemistry was just really intense. <coughs> you know, good, good kind of guy. We talked so much. I said, I've got to get back, you know, to the, to the home on the train. He walked me all the way from his office to the tube station. <laughs> at the tube station, we talked for about another hour. <laughs> I didn't get on my train right away. So I'm like, yeah, this, you know, this guy is just wonderful. So I'm going to go with him. Came home, looked at his client list, and it was all, you know, really big names. And I was like, good grief, I'm just so fortunate and blessed for this guy to even be bothered with a little guy like me to give me a chance, you know, out of prison where nobody else would to to get to help me get published. Now the other thing Sally said was to scrap. Um, the first book that was blogs and my sister's account the dual narrative she said that structure was not something that publishers would, would easily accept and market she said write your entire story in your own voice from beginning to end and just let's let's work with that so that's what I started to do now it ended up with so much that it's actually going to be coming out now as a trilogy of books and we brought Hard Time out first because it's focused mostly on the 26 months I spent in Sheriff Joe Arpaio's jail system. Now, I don't know how many of you are aware of Sheriff Joe Arpaio in here, but in America he's really famous. I mean, he's out doing publicity stunts all the time. He's got two reality TV shows, Smile You're Under Arrest, where they send he, people who've got outstanding warrants, they send them prizes in the mail saying you've got to come to this address to pick your prize up and they arrest them live on camera and Sheriff Joe Arpaio pops up you know smile you under arrest and the inmate idol is where they have they go into the jails and they have the inmates doing like a talent contest and stuff like that Sheriff Joe Arpaio was criticised recently um, he started a website where not only can you see the mug shots of all the newly arrested prisoners you can vote on who's the ugliest <laughs> yeah